Coming up, the worst kept secret about Halloween Horror Nights has finally been revealed. Plus, we have more ticket information and a special deal for Florida and Georgia residents. All of that on this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams, and I am joined alongside by my co-host, Rhino. Hello. Hello, Rhino. How are you doing? I'm fine. Fantastic. How are you? I'm, I cannot complain right now. I will, but I not right now. I think you'll try. I you'll will find try. a way. Life will find a way. And maybe it will. And like I said, we have a very fun episode for you where we're going to be talking about the weekend. We are going to be talking about Halloween Horror Nights multi-night tickets. And we're going to talk about not Halloween Horror Nights tickets, but that special ticket offer for Florida and Georgia residents. But before we get there, I need to remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content, you'll want to support us. Please consider booking a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money, and you get the support of an awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agent. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free no-obligation quote. And Rhino, how surprised were you when they announced the weekend house for Halloween Horror Nights? So surprised. Not really at all. Since that, I feel like, was so talked about so long ago, it could have literally been their first house announcement. It, it could have, and I heard a little bit of the background on why it couldn't happen, but I'm obviously not going to share that on the show, but it definitely was convoluted i feel like this was supposed to be the first announcement and just you know things things get in the way sometime life finds a way as you said earlier in this show for the first time ever uh no one has ever said that line before no. just you mm -hmm. and uh no but we finally got the announcement that the weekend was uh was actually coming to halloween horror nights i don't know if he's actually going to show up at our event but he will be represented in terms of a house called the weekend after hours nightmare and of course this is the first time ever that multi award winning artist the weekend will join forces with halloween horror nights for the haunted house that will be featured at Universal Orlando Resort starting on September 2nd and then Universal Studios Hollywood on September 8th. And in the house, it will allow guests to spiral into the twisted mind of the mysterious artist. Ooh, spooky. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, this is, of course, Global Phenomenon. The weekend is renowned for his groundbreaking music that blends daring, provocative lyrics with innovative sounds and ominous undertones. I love reading press releases sometimes <laughs> because this one is written like butter. It is just going on the toast, smooth and warm, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, After Hours is the weekend's fourth consecutive number one album and has spawned multiple, uh, multiple chart-topping hits, including Too Late, Heartless, in Your Eyes, and the wildly popular single Blinding Light, which is ranked as the number one greatest Hot 100 hit of all time by Billboard. Oh. That's in the press release. That's shocking to me. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that song, but I had no idea that it was that like that popular. I I mean... That's, I, that's weird. It's still on the radio all the time. And I only know because uh, on my recent vacation, we were listening to a lot of radio, uh, because I didn't have enough music downloaded to my phone in remote areas. And yeah, you, you still hear it all the time, no matter where you are. So uh, I, I can totally believe that as a fact. And you know what? The old man in me, I'm just going to always call it blinded by the light because he was inspired by none other than Bruce Springsteen, right? Uh, or was that Manfred Mann first? No, it was Bruce Springsteen. Then Manfred Mann stole it. That's how it happened. Well, yeah, I, well, blinded by the light, I'm is like one of Bruce Springsteen's most famous songs. So I would imagine it's his song. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Yeah. It was that. And yeah. then Manfred Mann covered it. 
I don't remember. It doesn't matter. It's not. It, it The song's Blinding Lights, as Rhino likes to remember. Remind me every time I misremember the name of the song. But anyways, this fall, select tracks from the riveting album are being reimagined as a horror movie soundtrack for the outrageously haunting experience at Halloween Horror Nights. Mm. Mm. Rhino, by any chance, do you have the press release up that I'm mentioning right now? You don't? I don't have you the don't. press release, no. That's fine. I'll just have Did to keep to reading. Read from it? Yeah, oh. I was just getting tired of reading. I know that was like springing Is it, it still on about you. the weekend? It's still about the weekend. Oh, I thought you were going to read about tickets or something. Uh, we are going to get there. Okay, I'll keep reading about the weekend. The dark undercurrent behind the weekend's enigmatic persona will permeate the all-new Halloween Horror Nights haunted houses on both coasts. You think somebody, before they write this, they're like, okay, here we go. They crack their knuckles, and then they're like... They've got the thesaurus open, yeah. their writing degree next to them. I, they're just like, get this copy going. We boop, 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 boop. are almost on the exact same page because I was going to say, first off, that diploma is proudly hanging on the wall. And, <laughs> right in front of them. Yeah. Like, like They have to look at it and be reminded like, yeah, I am good. No. <laughs> I got this, DeVry. I am. I am. Th- listen. This is one of those things I would love to have the job one day of writing press releases for someone. Uh, so I am not making fun of you at all. We do the same thing with Disney. It seems like press releases have gotten more over the top as the years have gone on. It's where there is someone with a physical thesaurus out. This is not Googling. This is like I need I need the hard copy in front of me to talk about every single word that could possibly go in here. It's hilarious because it kind of reminds me of like when you go somewhere, um, like when we were on one of the cruises recently and it was like this really big description about the dessert where it was like with a spring, like with a like flavor of key lime, blah, blah, blah. And this mousse of a thing. It was a slice of cheesecake yeah. when it came out. And I literally laughed when they put it down because I was like, the description made it seem like it was something so incredibly different where I was like. It gets to the point now where it's like, it's, and like you said, I'm not making fun of the person who wrote it. I'm sure it is an expectation and that like, but the language and any theme park press release is like tongue twisting. And you think they're just like, okay, can we do like, how many words do you think we can get that have the same alliteration in a row? A lot. There's like a, it's like a pool, like an yeah. office pool. Oh yeah. No, it's uh, again, I am jealous of their jobs. I would love to also do that. Obviously I don't have anything to write press releases for here. So that would be something else, but uh, it's just, it always blows my mind with it. But anyways, with the eerie sounds of after hours reverberating throughout the experience, guess we'll step into a surreal living nightmare filled with grotesque characters and themes inspired by the weekend's music and short films as they're stalked by slashers, bandaged maniacs, gruesome toad-like creatures, and other unfathomable horrors, unfathomable horrors with the mind of the artist, guests will be challenged to survive the night while trapped within a terrifying, unexpected world of the weekend after hours nightmare, a place that only exists in the weekend's vivid imagination and from which one may never escape. So, okay, so the interesting thing about The weekend, whose name, Abel... Um, I have it. Okay, uh, I was thinking. Tess Fay, I believe. Yeah. That's um, how it at least is spelled out as T-E-S-F-A-Y-E. Yeah, and I, I've never heard him referred to other than anything as The weekend. I know that they've been using his name a lot more recently because I believe he has a series that is about to debut or just debuted on, like, Apple TV or HBO Max. It's one of the two, but he wrote... he wrote out this i didn't know i mean it i guess he is a songwriter i assume i i don't know if people are writing their own songs or not so i never knew but i he i guess he wrote like a show that's around based around the music industry or something like that that's about to debut Uh you know what i'll look it up i'll get more information i don't know why i didn't pull my computer out and i just had my phone but i know that's fine while you are uh spiraling away with it i will uh i will fill in a little bit more so uh luckily since the announcement happened there have been a lot of people jumping in to help out with preparation for this house if you feel like you need a little preparation with it and uh, if you watch all of the music videos for after hours you know you can get a sense in a feel of how uh, how the twisted mind of the weekend works but uh, the one thing that has been shared the most including with us is that someone put together a compilation of all of the after hours music videos together in the 
like correct complete story and i i think it's called literally like after hours compiled and that is like right now that's being considered the best way to kind of do your research on what to expect from the house by watching that all in one order and i know we talked about this when we talked about the rumor uh there you you definitely can see from the music videos the horror elements in what the weekend does so i'm not contesting it on that uh I and honestly, I'm excited to see what the house is like because it, I feel like it's been a while since they've done a mashup house like this in Orlando. Because like the one that my mind always goes to is when they did Penn and Teller way way. Oh back yeah, when. I remember. I, I I never went or saw that or anything. I don't even know if I was really into Halloween Horror Nights when that happened, but I remember seeing that and being like, "What?" Yeah. So it's and it's one of those things, you know, that Slash always does music for Hollywood. So it's not like this is a new concept at all for Universal. They tried to make things work with Billie Eilish. And I it's I'm just intrigued by this one because, you know, with any house that is based on an IP, you are. It's always best if you do the research on it. You know, you watch the TV show or you watch the movie that it's based on and you kind of get that better idea for it. Uh, But this is like one where it's like, I feel like for the first time, I have to actually do some research on it to understand it, that it might not just jump out to me right away. Did you already say it? Sorry, because I was reading about the show that like the six songs they were like familiarize yourself with apparently if you arrange them in a certain way are going to tell the story of the house yeah that's um i i didn't talk about it with that but i said with uh someone put together the music videos and it's like under on youtube it's like after hours compiled and Hmm. that's apparently the storyline that it's going to follow i mean i i'm a fan of i mean i'll be honest i'm a fan i'm a fan of the weekend um the freaking weekend uh i I enjoy the singles. I haven't really listened to much beyond that, but I am like, he is in my playlist comes up on one of my most recently or not most recently, most listened to songs or a lot of his more recent um, singles. But I also believe when I hear him, his voice is very reminiscent of Michael Jackson. I feel like if, and I would compare his style to like a modern day Michael Jackson, but the show is called the idol. And it's an upcoming American drama television series created by The Weeknd uh, for HBO. And it's set against the backdrop of the music industry. And the series will focus on a self-help guru and the leader of a modern-day cult who enters into a complicated relationship with a rising pop idol, Lily Rose Depp, Johnny Depp's daughter. Mm. And Tess Faye are set to star in the leading roles. So not only did he like write this show he's starring in the show as well now wow and now this thing with the house and the thing i'm like he is having a a good yeah. year yeah a, a good year indeed so mm. i am i'm very much not looking, just a good weekend yeah. a good year oh boom <laughs> you nailed it now i you know i was one of the uh, very uh very small minorities out there who enjoyed when the weekend had his super bowl show so i that was my first like true exposure to him, did but he have then, the masked people, the people with the bandages in that? Yeah, show? Okay, that, that's and what that I thought, was the right? yeah. like wandering aimlessly through the hall of mirrors and lights. Yeah, and okay, because the blinding it, lights. Yeah. yeah, it kind of was like an HHN house that they built on a field as part of all of that. But uh, that's I, you know, I've. I I can't say I'm an expert on the weekend still since the rumor has been around so long. I should have made myself uh, somewhat of an expert, but I, I just haven't. I've listened to the music, but not enough to like really, really memorize it all and really get into it. But I'm 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 optimistic for this house. I think I think it is definitely a stretch that Halloween Horror Nights is taking going in this direction. And it could it could bring something that the event hasn't really had in the past couple of years. So that's that's always a good thing for me is, you know, them getting out of the box and moving to another dimension. Uh, I'm very Twilight Zone. The, Thank you. I, I, yeah, my thing is that I'm hoping it'll be like a surprise hit. Yeah. Um, like the unexpected thing, because I feel like everybody's kind of writing it off a little bit as the chatter I see, but I'm... I text you right away. My friend CJ, who has been coming now to who come, makes a trip every year to Halloween Horror Nights to come, he already said he was coming this year before this. He texted me the announcement and was like, "I am very excited yeah. for this." And I was like, "I'm." It was nice to see something where it wasn't the people who are so deep into HHN, like as you know, fans and and stuff like that, 
it was nice to see the flip side and see some of the positivity of it. But I, it'll be interesting in terms of I'm so used to houses having like that dark, scary, like metal music or, you know, Rob Zombie, like you said, Slash. I think it'll be really cool because like one of my favorite things about like the Stranger Things house when they did that was how it was that like synth electronic yeah. music kind of played as we went through. Yeah. And that I think it, you know, it'll be interesting to see how these songs from the weekend, like how that translates and plays as we go through the house. If we'll hear any of it in the house or if it'll literally just be based on yeah. the words, I'm assuming we'll hear it in the queue, but. It'll be interesting in terms of like setting a mood. Yeah. Oh, no, it'll definitely be a vibe. And I was talking to Kylie about this. And I I do think that this is going to be a huge draw for the people who aren't necessarily interested in HHN, but are interested in him. And on top of that, too, I, I think it will end up surprising me because sometimes when I build up expectations for something that I think is going to be like, oh, this this is going to hit the horror in HHN in the right way. Something last year like uh, Boris Schuster in that house mm -hmm. that ended up being such a disappointment for me. Whereas then you get surprised by other things. I think this one's going to come through as a surprise, a really fun house. But that's just me. I honestly, I hope because I'm not going to lie. I feel like the like potential lineup for houses. Like when I look at the map as a whole, I'm like, I'm feel like this is kind of a lull of a year for me personally. But here's the thing. I love Halloween. Yeah. I love Halloween Horror Nights. I love everything about it. I don't know anything about what the scare zones are. I know a rumor about what they could be. And that's where I'm like, if that rumor proves to be true, I might just enjoy never even going in houses. But I, I just think. I will always be excited about it. I think just for me, there's, I'm going to have to just accept, and I should have been accepting it a long time ago, is that just because there's something that you really, really want to be at Halloween Horror Nights doesn't, you know, you have to accept that you're not going to get it. But then also, it's kind of like one of those things where isn't it kind of neat that you watch stuff now and you're like, oh, I want to live in this. And you, the first thing you think about where you could live and experience it is at Universal Studios. And I think that's a big deal for them. And I don't just mean that as terms of like uh, being the, you know, the hyper fans that we are. Like I've had other people say it to me. They were like, I'd go to Universal Studios. So it's crazy that that's the first thing that I think that's a testament to Universal storytelling ability, especially with this event, is that people automatically think about them in terms of like who could do it. Yeah. I think that's a really great point, and it is a, it's a good point that helps us uh, segue into our next topic, uh, because they do it so well, you're going to want to go multiple nights, and it's always the question, when are they going to release multi-night tickets? Well, they finally came here this week, too, and you can buy them right now in four different options with an asterisk, because technically there's way more options than, than just the four, but we're going to talk about the base four and some add-ons real quick. And so here we go. Of course, the first multi-night pass you can buy is the Rush of Fear Pass. And this gets you into uh, the first 17 event nights. And this is $129 per person plus tax. And that gives you access on September 2nd through 4th, 7th through 11th, 15th through 18th, and 21st through 25th. And then after those dates, if you want to go to HHN again, you will need another ticket. That's it's only good for these dates unless something like a hurricane happens and they have to add on dates and they, you know, mingle around with that. But it, basically, yeah, you're done after those dates are over. That's it. Uh, the next level up is the frequent fear pass, and this gives you 27 nights of the event every Sunday through Thursday, plus the first weekend for $179.99 per person plus tax. This means access on September 2nd through 4th, 7th and 8th, 11th, 15th, 18th, 21st, 22nd, 25th, 28th, 29th, October 2nd, 5th, 6th, 9th, 12th, 13th, 16th, 19th, 20th, 23rd, 26th, 27th, and 30th and 31st. Why did you read those dates? What day of the week is that? Ah, uh, those are all Sundays through Thursdays. Oh, you're just giving every date that yep. the pass is available? Because you know what? Maybe someone doesn't realize what day they're going, but they hear, I know I'm going to be there on October, whatever. I could do that one. Okay. It's just a lot of information. Oh, <laughs> That's all. it's a lot of information. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's a lot. And I'm regretting it now, but you can't well, go you back. Well, you can't stop now. Nope. Can't stop now. Can't, can't have tried. Uh, then next level up is frequent fear plus pass. And this gives you 36 nights of the event. Buckle up. 
every Sunday through Friday, plus the first and last Saturday nights of the event. This one is $219.99 per person plus tax. So this is September 2nd through 4th, 7th through 9th, 11th, 15th, 16th, 18th, 21st through 23rd, 25th, 28th through the 30th, then October 2nd, 5th through the 7th, 9th, 12th through the 14th, 16th, 19th through the 21st, 23rd, and 26th through the 31st. And finally, the ultimate frequent fear pass is every single night of the event plus free parking after 5 o'clock p.m. on all event nights. And this one costs $324.99. And of course, these are all without Express. If you want to add Express onto them, the price just goes up even more because Russia Fear then becomes $429.99. Uh, frequent Fear is $599.99. Or sorry, $509.99. Frequent Fear Plus is $500. $99.99. And then the ultimate frequent fear plus express is $819.99. And uh, outside of those multi night passes, they've also made two other tickets available. One is for the Scream Early ticket, which that's $35 per person plus tax. And as we've talked about in the past before, that allows you into Universal Studios Florida starting at three o'clock. So that way you can make it into one of the stay and scream areas at five o'clock when those are in full swing. And of course, stay and scream allows you to stay inside of Universal Studios Florida for before Halloween Horror Nights officially kicks off and you are able to experience at least one house before the event officially begins every night and uh you know usually you have time to do more than one before all the guests get in and sometimes you you have the opportunity to knock out a lot so we always recommend doing stay and scream but it does require you to either have access to universal studios florida that day or a stay and scream the uh sorry the scream early ticket you need one of the two you have to be in the park before uh so like yeah you can't if you don't have an annual pass or a park ticket you can't just buy the ultimate frequent fear and be like, I get free parking and I can do that. No, it, it doesn't work like that. So think about that when you're planning your vacations. And then also they are bringing back the Scare Actor dining experience. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. It is very interesting. $54.99, you get a buffet dinner at uh, Louis Italian Restaurant. Oh, jeez. Plus... I thought you were just making a joke when you said Louis. No, no, I no, don't no. mean that in a rude way. I mean, a pizza buffet sounds delicious to me. You well, know you know our affinity uh, for pizza. No, it's usually themed to Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, okay. It's so just in Louis. It's in Louis because it used to be in the Monsters Cafe, which, of course, is yeah. now a Bummer. pile of... Well, it's it's still upright, so but the walls have been ripped out and stuff. It oh. is it is no more and will never be more. So it's happening in Louis now. Uh, you do get special character photo ops and a digital download of one photo that was taken during the dinner. And of course, it does require you to have Halloween Horror Nights uh, admission in order to get it. So uh, we we've, have to we've do never it done this it. year. Yeah, I've never done it. I feel like this is the worst year to try it. Yeah, but so that's why we it. have to do it. Okay. Because I think this, not it's crazy, but it's insane. Well, okay, I just used a different word for crazy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting that it's not in a themed venue this time. Also, having Louis not open for Halloween Horror Nights, that's an interest. That's a yeah. choice because I feel like a lot of people... That's a go-to, like for because they had the they expanded pizza, uh, fries. pizza fries were yeah. there and like just pizza in general. When you've been drinking, I feel like it's an interesting. I, I don't a, know. It was also a big quick service restaurant that if you needed a break and you needed some air conditioning, yeah. that was a great place to go. Uh, but they have to work with what they have. Yeah, that's so true. just it, this year. Next yeah. year it'll be in Minions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if that is what the cafe yeah. is. I mean, yeah. the only other thing they could have done is taken over Simpsons, and I feel like that no, might have been. Be, yeah, no I, way. Yeah, that because that's the tough. holding. They you, they use so much that for holding. Exactly I feel like too. So exactly, right. which I mean, Louis was also connected with the holding areas too. It's just they had no good option in the my food, opinion. The food trucks aren't out during Halloween Horror Nights, right? Like those go away. No, I can't because remember. they do tents. They, I think they still have like at least one or two of the trucks up, but they have. Tents. Oh wait, they had the food truck out. That's where we got the deep fried peanut butter yep. thing and everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying there's still food options. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, there's tons. Of, yeah. We, we got a lot last year. They have upped their food every yeah. single year from the days of where it was only twisted taters. Yeah. And now it's. Like, I forgot about the. I don't know. I'm having a brain thing. It's uh, okay. 
It's okay. I know. We we will obviously keep hyping ourselves up for Halloween Horror hey, Nights. It's bring back closer. that pumpkin beer. Bring it back. <laughs> I, I I have no doubts that they will, but we are running out of time for this show, so we're going to move on to our final topic, and that is the Florida and Georgia ticket offer that is happening right now. Uh, Universal Orlando Resort is inviting Florida and Georgia residents to take advantage of its get one day free with a two-park, two-day ticket offer with limited blockout dates. Uh, and guests can buy those now through September 28th, and they'll be able to experience Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure. And I believe that ticket is good through, I forgot the dates off the top of my head. I want to say December 19th. It's like right before things get really crazy with the holiday season. Uh, and uh for an additional $25, guests can add a day at Universal's Volcano Bay Water Theme Park. And then you also have access to Volcano Bay, too. So, again, uh, Georgia is getting brought back up into the mix, which I think this is great uh, in terms of actual, you know, letting letting a state that so many people travel from down here, like, letting them in on some of the special deals with it. I, I think that's really awesome because, you know, you can technically, you can be at the border of, you can live in the border of Georgia and you're only four hours away. So you can be just as close as you are in Miami and live in Georgia. So I think, I think it is actually fair that they get let in on some of the deals. And you know what, anytime they offer a uh, get one day free with uh, any park ticket i think i think that's a solid deal that a lot of people can take advantage of and you know i would say that it might hint towards uh future projections of travel with residents but also the day we're recording this the uh, comcast earnings reports came out and universal uh comcast confirmed that universal parks are still seeing higher attendance now than pre-pandemic so this is like this is one of those deals that it's a deal happening when they don't really need to be running any deals right now. I mean, it's really it's really smart because it, 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 they they understand that like people are coming and like traveling and doing this stuff that they're like, OK, this is how we get the people that were on the fence because you'd be like, wow, there's never deal, you know, or the, it's those people who are like, well, we thought about going to Universal, but now we're definitely going to Universal because if we can get that extra day free and then you create that. um I don't know, dynasty. What's the word for like that generational love of this? So they're ready to go when that new theme park opens. And then before you know it, it'll be one of those things where you'll be like, I used to go all the time when I was a little kid. I mean, which is what it's like for me. But I'm at the age now where I'm going to start putting that on my nieces and nephews and being yeah. like, look at this theme park because they're all getting into Harry Potter now. And and um, I mean, you know, yeah. Transformers, stuff like that. So it's like perfect place yeah. uh, no, we talk about it with the nostalgia with walt disney world that it's still so ingrained but it's a good way it's a good way to start getting people ingrained on the nostalgia for universal that don't have it yet and this deal you can do that travel through december 15th 2022 so uh yeah you you have to you have to take advantage of it before that time but it's definitely an offer that you can take advantage of and of course you know you can look into that deal on your own but since i mentioned it at the beginning uh with anything we talked about today with halloween horror nights or this deal uh always feel free to reach out to our sponsors dreams unlimited travel and they can get you set up on a universal vacation because the agents that sell universal they they go there they know all about it they they are probably at points experts more than we are with universal so i highly recommend if you want to use them to plan an upcoming universal vacation you absolutely should but rhino i think that's where we're going to wrap it up we haven't had a show in a little bit because of travel and other happenings so i feel like we shouldn't overdo it for this one we should ease back into the show that's fine okay okay well thank you very much rhino for having this conversation with me and uh thank you everyone out there for listening and taking the time to watch we truly appreciate it and if you enjoyed what you watched on youtube hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel and leave comments questions and video suggestions in the comment section and if you were one of those listening please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and if it's through apple podcasts you know, leave a leave a rating and review or Spotify where anywhere you can leave ratings and reviews, please do so. And once again, I want to remind you, this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. So if you want to support us more, book that vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. But 
that's going to do it for us. Rhino, again, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. And sincerely to everyone out there. Thank Have a good you weekend. So much. <laughs> you were just waiting for that. You were waiting <laughs> for that. Uh, luckily, this does come out right before the weekend. The weekend. <laughs> uh, but thank you to everyone for supporting us, for listening and watching. Uh, remember, we cannot continue this show if you don't continue to <laughs> watch and listen and especially book those vacation through dreams that allows us to continue doing this show. So uh, we really appreciate you. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. Remember, we still haven't changed the name. 